Okay, uh, welcome to uh, the IMU section 18 on uh, stochastic and differential modeling. My name is Felix Otto. I'm from the Max Planck Institute for Mathematics and the Sciences in Leipzig, Germany. It's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Yongbei Kang. Uh, Professor Kang holds the Changjiu Chair at the Inha University in South Korea, and he's the director of the uh, Institute of Applied Mathematics there. He's also a fellow of the Korean Academy of Science. Professor Kang's expertise are inverse problems, in particular on how to reconstruct the inhomogeneities like inclusions of a medium from boundary measurements. He does so in a multi-physics context involving conductivity, elasticity, both statically or dynamically in terms of waves. He also contributed to the understanding when this type of detection is not possible, also known as cloaking. Moreover, he had made surprising mathematical connections between these detection problems and shape optimization. Professor Kang has written an impressive number of very well-received monographs on these topics. Professor Kang will speak about quantitative analysis of field concentration and presence of closely located inclusions of high contrast. Please. Hi. Um, it's, uh, it's my honor to deliver an invited lecture at the ICM. Uh, my name is Xiangbei Kang at uh, in our university in South Korea. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, um, qualitative analysis of field concentration. This is a kind of stress in presence of closely located inclusions of hard contrast. So the key words is the field concentration and uh, closely located and high contrast. Okay. Uh, the problem is uh, we have two inclusions, D1 and D2, and uh, say their material property like a conductivity is like a K1 and K2, and the background uh, matrix, the conductivity of the background is one. And the characteristic feature of this uh, configuration is that the uh, epsilon, the distance between D1 and the D2 is small. And the uh, high contrast means the K1 is uh, far away from one and far away, K2 is also far away from one, like uh, infinity or zero. If the K is uh, infinity, then it means the conductor is perfectly conducting. And if K is a zero, it means that it's insulated, so no flux comes in. So the material prop the parameter for, for this problem is uh, uh, given like this. And the constituent equation is a conductivity equation. Okay. This it can be regarded as conductivity equation or uh, anti-plane elasticity equation. Okay. And uh, this, when U is solution, the gradient of U represents the stress. Okay. And uh, the, in general, if the, it is a high contrast material, then in between these two closely located, uh, the region in between two inclusion, uh, the gradient become arbitrarily large. And uh, the problem is to estimate the, the gradient uh, in terms of the distance as epsilon goes to zero. Or uh, because, because the gradient becomes singular, so characterize the singularity of the uh, uh, gradient. These are problems. Okay. But if the material uh, parameter is finite, 
like uh, k1 and k2 is uh, far away from infinity and zero, then it is known that uh, gradient, uh, infinite gradient is bounded independently of the uh, distance. This is not only uh, holds for uh, two inclusion case, many inclusion, it doesn't matter. It is bounded regardless of the uh, distance. And this was proved by uh, Bonadier and Borgelius for the, for the circular case, and the NME and the Michael Borgelius for general conductivity equation, and also NME and the Louis Nirenberg in 2003 for the elliptic system, including elasticity equation, elasticity, Lamé system. So our question is what happens if k goes to zero or infinity? This is a high contrast case. So as this figure shows, this is actually numerical computation of the gradient when the, for the high contrast case and the gradient become arbitrarily large. Now, the motivation for this problem, it comes from um, it, uh, two problems, like uh, stress analysis and composite. It's uh, done by Babushka and Anderson and Smith in, in uh, 1999. And so, for example, uh, these two inclusions, these two inclusions located uh, very close to each other. And uh, the stress become large. And in between these uh, 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 two inclusions, stress become gradient become very large, and that cause the failure of the composite. So this is the one reason. And the, all the others, the interaction between only two inclusions method. So we took uh, two inclusions and consider two inclusion problem. Another one is uh, uh, Joe Keller and the Fla uh, Flaherty Keller. The, this one is for the conductivity and this one is for the elasticity. And we have the periodic uh, array of the materials, high contrast materials. And this is a the composite. And the question is, what is the effective property of this composite? And to compute that, we need to know the gradient of, of the solution, in particular asymptotic uh, behavior of the solution. So these two are the outstanding motivations for, for, the, for this study. And actually the last 20 years, uh, two decades, uh, there has been, have been uh, lots of results, important results on this, and I'm going to review some of that. Uh, conductivity equation, so we are considering conductivity equation so the problem is given uh, an harmonic function h in entire plane, in particular it is a linear function, then we consider uh, this equation, conductivity equation, and uh, at the, the boundary behavior, I mean, at the, the behavior with the specified behavior at the bound at infinity. This is a free space problem. So this problem, because we are taking two inclusions out of the composite, so we ignore all the other inclusions. So we consider it as a, as a free space problem, or we may consider the, uh, the boundary value problem, like uh, we have domain and the two inclusions. Such a problem, as a such a problem. It's, a, it's a, the same problem. Mm even though I prefer working on this. So as I mentioned, the problem is estimate the gradient to U and even more, I mean, higher derivative, higher order derivatives when there are, when there are closely located inclusions with the extreme material properties. Okay. So mm, let me explain some important results. So in 2D, the optimal blob rate is uh, epsilon to the minus one half. So one of the square root of epsilon. 
So in the circular case, uh, Joe Kello already uh, derived uh, such uh, uh, estimate when H, given H is linear function. And then with uh, Habib Amari and uh, Lim, and also uh, with these people, Li, Li, Lim, we proved that the gradient behaves like this. And where lambda j is uh, this number. And so if the kj is a uh, infinity, then this number becomes one half. So this one disappear. Uh, if the k1 and k2 is are zero, it's the same. It's, this one is becomes zero. So gradient blows up at this order. And this is optimal. optimal. And then when K1 and K2 is infinity, this result was extended to the, the strictly convex domains. So domain does not have to be circular, it is strictly convex. Then in between this, the gradient blows up at the order of epsilon to the minus one half. In 3D, it was uh, 2009 and 2010, Yan Yan Ni and uh, his students proved that uh, this surprising result, the, the blob rate is, uh, it is good for the uh, K1 and K2 infinity, one over epsilon or over epsilon. And the circular inclusion case was uh, also uh, obtained by uh, same result. Lim and Yun and the Lacknet, right? Three D insulating case. Two D insulating case is uh, just uh, uh, the same as a uh, uh, conducting case because of the existence of harmonic conjugates. But three D case is completely different, and only. Uh, only partial or non-optimal results have been obtained. Uh, Yan Yan Ni uh, proved that uh, in, even in this case, gradient is uh, bounded by epsilon to the minus one half. But Yun proved that uh, if two circular, I mean two spherical inclusions, the same radius, and he considered the straight line into the shortest straight line in between this. And on this, he made the estimates of gradient of loop. And he proved that it, it blows up like uh, epsilon to minus one half. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, this is smaller than uh, minus one half. Okay. Lately, uh, and then Ni and his students and Dong, uh, Hong Jie Dong and the uh, Yan Ni and the Wang, they proved that the, uh, improved these results by this number, minus one half plus some positive number. Yeah. And the uh, Weinkopf uh, derived an upper bound on this number but this result is on, works only for dimension higher than four, higher or equal to four. So the optimal estimates for the insulating case in 3D is an outstanding, uh, really challenging open problem. I think it's really challenging. And another interesting subject is uh, asymptotic characterization. Uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, so uh, if the, we have uh, two circular inclusions, then B1 and B2, this is B1 and this is B2, and the P1 and P2 are the, we consider the reflections are one inversion with respect to boundary B1, and R2 is inversion with respect to boundary B2, then we consider repeated uh, inversions, uh, R2 mixed inversions, R2 and R1 and R1 
and R2. And they have fixed point. This is a fixed point. And consider this uh, function. This function appears uh, when we deal with the uh, pol uh, bipolar coordinates. But uh, Yun used this uh, function to, to deal with this kind of uh, uh, gradient blow up. And the particular property of this, uh, this function is that uh, they are constant on, on the boundary here and here. Of course, constants are different. They are constant. Okay. Now, asymptotic characterization is that uh, suppose we have the uh, convex domain, not the, the I mean, just they, 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 at the closest points, so they are convex. And so it's the red curves. And then we consider uh, the oscillating circles around here. And then using this oscillating circle, we can construct the function Q as before here. And then the solution of the problem U can be decomposed as a singular part and the regular part. And uh, this a epsilon is uh, some constant. In general, is, it cannot be explicit, but uh, mm, we know that it is bounded. Okay, and this was done by the Amari and this uh, Chiroalo and myself and Lee and Lin in 2013. It was uh, it appeared at the uh, And uh, uh, earlier, at the with my students at that time, I mean, Lim and Yun, we cons considered the, the this case and the, the there, this in, uh, intensity stress concentration factor is uh, given by this explicitly in the case of this. But the, in non, the, if it is not this, then we don't know. But uh, with uh, Li and Yun, we prove that this number, convert, as epsilon goes to zero, this number converges to this A0, which is uh, this number. And uh, U0 here is that the uh, solution of the touching case. Okay. Touching case, uh, maybe the, because of the cusp outside here, you may think that the solution may not exist. Yes, that's true. but. Uh, because the boundary condition is constant, solution exists, and uh, this number converges to uh, this number. And so the, for the numerical computations, you can use this number as an approximation. But the more, it's also very interesting is that the, we have this decomposition, A epsilon Q plus B epsilon. And this B epsilon converges, this regular part converges to the solution of the uh, what the, uh, the, the touching case, and this singular part is a uh, disappear completely. I'm not saying that it converges to zero. It cannot be converging to zero because it is uh, behaving like a, uh, one of a square root epsilon, but it disappeared like a electrical spark when two electrodes uh, gets closer then there is an electrical spark but when they touch the spark disappears it's just like that so this is quite interesting in general uh, is it true that uh, we have i mean in 3d is it true that uh, we can decompose uh, solution into uh, singular part and the regular part, and the regular part converges to the touch case solution, and the singular part disappears. Maybe that's true. In two dimensions, this is true. And uh, Lim and uh, Yu, uh, he, he, her student Yu at that time, in 2015, they proved that the K1 is, so for example, K1 is zero and K2 is infinity. So we have the insulator and the conductor, then uh, 
gradient to U is bounded regardless of epsilon distance. Circular inclusion. Okay. High order derivative. This is re recent results of the Dong and Hongzhou Dong and the Hai Gang Li in 2019. It has appeared in ARMA, published in ARMA. And they showed that the uh, nth derivative, an infinite norm of the nth derivative on, the, on some subset containing these two sets is given by this. So in particular, say, for example, K1 and K2 is infinity or zero, then this number is uh, one. So it be blows up like, a, or the nth derivative blows, blows up like the epsilon to the minus n over two. And they also uh, proved the similar result, same results actually uh, for the inhomogeneous problem. Okay. Non homogeneous or in homogeneous problem. And some other the development to some other equations like uh, the Peter equation, Gore uh, and Novikov uh, derived the uh, stress concentration factor. And also Bao and uh, Li and Li. This is our uh, NME and the uh, Li. They prove the estimates, they derive the estimates for the Lame system. And we also characterize uh, uh, the singularity of the solution for the Lame system, two-dimensional Lame system. Okay. Now we, uh, with my student, Yongguan Ji, uh, who is there, no, not, not here, okay. Uh, we, uh, consider the circular inclusion case uh, to, to understand, understand actually we started this, uh, this uh, uh, program project uh, to, to understand the, the Dong and the Lee's result using uh, normal Poincare operator. So, the equation is this, even though it works for the inhomogeneous problem, non-homogeneous problem. Okay, so our technique here is that the layer potential theory. So we consider single layer potential, and then single layer potential, the derivative of single layer potential uh, enjoys the jump formula. So normal derivative from outside is uh, pick up plus one half here. And the normal derivative from the inside pick up minus one half and the K, K star is uh, given by this. It's just the normal derivative of this, this kernel. And this called, this operator is called the normal Poincare operator because uh, uh, the study of this operator goes back to uh, Norman and uh, C Norman and Poincare. They try to solve the digital problem using I mean, boundary value problem using layer potentials and this operator appears naturally. And also, uh, if the domain has a corner, then this operator is not compact. And so it is, becomes a singular integral operator. And it's uh, this main topic of this theory of the singular integral operators. And recently, uh, Kavinson and Shapiro in 2007, they realized that they're using this uh, Plamelis uh, symmetrization principle, which is this. Uh, they showed that uh, K star can be realized as a self adjoint operator. So it becomes, if the domain is smooth, then it becomes a self adjoint compact operator. So it, it has uh, eigenvalues uh, of the finite multiplicities conversion to zero, and they are. Mm, uh, or the eigenfunctions are uh, orthogonal to each other. Now, we seek a solution in this form. So single layer potential uh, H is given function and uh, we take a single layer potential on D1 and boundary D2. 
And the interface condition on boundary DJ is given by this. This is a continuity of the uh, continuity of the uh, potential, and this is a continuity of the flux. And then this uh, function, this potential phi one and phi two, if we plug in this uh, this equation into here, this one is automatically satisfied, and we plug in here and using this jump formula. We see that the, this phi, phi one and phi phi is phi one and phi two, should satisfy this integral equation, and the lambda is uh, this number, which appears uh, before, uh, lambda k j plus one two times k j minus one, and the k star for this operator is uh, given by this. non parallel operator. No, no, Parker operator, and then the derivative of this. This is the normal no, Parker operator for the two circle. Now, uh, we have the two circle, D1 and uh, D2, and then T is a Mabius transformation, which maps this one to this, to concentric this circles. But uh, it is known that the concentric circle, I mean, the, in two dimensions, NP spectrum, non quantile spectrum, is invariant on the Mavis transformation. This is Schieffer's result. Uh, I think it is a 59 or something. And the, on this uh, concentric circles, it is known. I mean, the, Spectrum is known. This is our first derived part, uh, going to get into tricky. And uh, further, this uh, two circular case has a very special feature. It is a, a separate orthogonality. Means that the, if the uh, two functions are orthogonal with respect to certain inner product defined by single potential, then it is a orthogonal separate. So using this property, we can construct the solution of this integral equation explicitly using the spectrum of the normal property operator. And then, so we have this uh, uh, D1, D2, and this maps uh, D1 star and D2 star. Then we define HJ to be the analytic function here and here defined by this uh, uh, Mavis transformation. This Mavis transformation is this. So this function is a kind of transformation of H to this is a I mean, the real part. And then using this number, this R1 is uh, this uh, radius and R2 is this radius. We construct, define the function like this. So it is a repeated, and I mean, there's sum of, this is dilation. We pick the dilate, keep dilating, and then take a sum and uh, define two functions a1 and a2, like that. Very technical, but very explicit. Then the solution can be ah, this is uh, sorry, this is h, it's given by this. So this function, explicit function, and another explicit function, and then its real part is the solution. And we can estimate now, we can estimate all the, even though it is not the, the simple, but you can estimate all the derivatives and so on. 
So if the K1 minus one times K2 minus one, including the case K1, K2 being infinity or K1, K2 being zero, then nth derivative is uh, at infinite normal and nth derivative uh, is estimated like this. So this is a recovery of the uh, Dong Li's result. So I've mentioned this uh, before. But the uh, K1 minus one and K2 minus one is negative. So K1 is zero and the K1 is infinity. Then we have this kind of result. You see, importance is this is minus one and plus one. So we have, say, for example, K1 is zero and K2 is infinity. Then we have this estimates. You see, first derivative, if n is one, then right-hand side is just bounded. So the gradient is bounded. But second derivative has the block of all the absolutely minus one half. Third derivative has epsilon to the minus two over two and so on. So one degree less. And uh, these uh, blob rates are optimal in the sense that if the H is, H is this, this H, then if the K1 and K2 is infinity, then this is a known result. Epsilon to the minus one half, larger than epsilon to the minus one half. If the K1 is zero and K2 is infinity, then the second derivative blows up to the epsilon to minus one half. So this is, shows that the, the result is optimal. Okay. Yeah. So this raise, uh, uh, even if it is a circling, we are dealing with circular inclusions. But other than circular inclusions, maybe it's not possible to use this uh, 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 normal the theory of normal buffer, spectral theory of normal buffer operator. Uh, maybe uh, first degree, first order one may be possible. I don't know. I expect so, but uh, I don't know. Mm. So it raises uh, many questions. So let me summarize the, some open problems. So insulating case, this is our standing problem. So already it becomes a hot topic. Okay. It seems so. You see this, uh, the problem is that uh, you have these kind of uh, three-dimensional things, and then the, the electrical field goes around. So maybe it depends on the geometry. Conducting case, the blob is uh, regardless, as, as long as it is uh, strictly convex, the weight is the same. But the uh, insulating case, maybe it depends, the weight itself depends on, on the geometry, local geometry of the domain. I don't know. Uh, optimal estimates for the insulator conducting case. So insulator conducting conducting means that K1 is zero and the K2 is uh, infinity. Only circular case, we know the gradient is bounded. But how, how about the general case? General shape or higher dimensions? Nobody knows. It's, the, it's uh, just the beginning of the story. And also higher order derivative, the estimates of the higher order derivative. Okay, they are very good problems. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Kang, uh, for this uh, very concise uh, talk on a uh, interesting subject. Unfortunately, Professor Kang wasn't able to join us uh, live, uh, so uh, there are no uh, there's no possibility to ask questions right now. 
I invite people to use this uh, Discord uh, software to ask questions, which uh, Professor Kang may answer later. And I thank you all for uh, joining this uh, session and uh, goodbye.